Hi, yeah. you guys. It's me once again, Kiana, coming at you today with our Texas nacho platter with our raspberry bars that we're making for dessert. Um, what I've done is I've taken the liberty of using half a bag of these um, white tortilla chips. And I say use half a bag because they're going to be so fully loaded that you may want to have some on the side that doesn't have any of the ground beef and cheese mixture on it. Um, so what I've done is I've put them in a casserole dish like this. And I have some imitation um, Velveeta. And some imitation Velveeta does not melt properly. So you're going to have to use which, uh, what works for you. Um, a lot of people are scared to use anything other than Velveeta. But when you've tried several different um, cheaper um, cheese spread items, then you uh, become well informed of which one melts properly. So I use one that's at um, the Aldi food market that melts extremely well. Um, you get a whole huge log of it um, and it's only $2.29 versus the Velveeta huge log is um, usually um, between the price of like $4.99 and $5.50. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take three big huge chunks of that and you're going to crumble it just take lumps like that and you're going to just do that over the chips I've also um, in this time that we've been apart I've also uh, ground the ground beef and seasoned that with um, taco seasoning and I put that into a medium sized mixing bowl uh, with that amount you can use probably one and a half packets of the taco seasoning And we may not even need all of this Velveeta. Um, what I've done is I put the Velveeta in a sandwich bag um, in my fridge so that I can make something else out of that Velveeta. Um, stretching that dollar as much as we can. You're probably not going to need all of this because I'll show you guys in a second. Because we're also going to use... Um, the four blend shredded mozzarella cheese as well. Again, this is why we want to save some of those chips because this is going to be so cheesy, this first layer, and so loaded with um, ground beef, seasoned ground beef, and refried brains that you're going to definitely have to uh, use some chips as well that don't have anything on it. Now, I have this little bit left, and that is the cheese. We're going to go into our Mexican blend. And this basically, you don't have to use that much because we already used a lot of the Velveeta um, substitute. So you're just going to basically, let me turn. You're going to basically go over this. This is just for, um, to have the stringy effect as well. Because we really don't need the extra cheese, so... I'm not into measuring, but if you want to measure, this was probably approximately about, that was probably about a cup, not even a full cup of the shredded cheese mixture. This is how it looks with the shredded cheese and the Velveeta cheese. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this little beef that's seasoned and you're going to layer that over the chips and this is good for Super Bowls um, this is not just good for um, it's good for like if you want to change as far as uh, what you're eating during the week it's good for if you got to fix something really quick say you have um, a group coming over or some church members or something like that this is really good because you put this out and I guarantee you will not have any left and 
you're gonna load that ground beef all on these chips and it looks like a lot you guys but you saw the ground beef that I used because I showed you guys how it looked when it was in a Ziploc bag frozen and as you guys know it wasn't really much but it looks like a lot it does stretch and what you're going to do is you're going to take some of these refried beans and you're going to place this in the center and the reason why I said place it in the center and I'll show you guys how I did it the reason why I place it in the center is so that people that don't eat beans can stay away and people that do eat beans they can take it from the center that way you don't have to get into um, a lot of time with making sure some people have you know a portion of beans and you don't have to do that individually it takes up um, a lot of time when you have to do that kind of stuff. My husband is very picky about what he eats. Um, so I've learned ways to get around um, saving time where um, I've learned ways of uh, saving time and making sure that he appeased, that he is appeased as well. So, um, hey honey, I'm doing a video. I put the beans in the middle. See, he came right in and scrunched up his nose like I just told you guys when he seen the beans so he don't realize I just said that place the beans in the middle so that anybody that don't want beans can stay away from the middle area he came right into this y'all that stink face so this is how it looks <laughs> and you see the beans is all spread out in the middle and like a thick line and you also if you like um, you can take some salsa now um, a small portion and drizzle it um, in between the beans I'm meaning on each side of the beans and I will do that at this time what that does is just gives it just um, gives you some tomato um, based to what you had your meal and you're not going to use a lot because everybody don't like salsa. You're going to just use a little bit on each side. And it's mainly just for pretty. And that's it, ladies. You're going to bake this in the oven. Um, you're not going to bake it to the point that, you know, it has to be very brown. But you're just baking it so that all the flavors mesh together. The cheese melts and get all gooey and sticks together with the other items. And I'm going to show you all what this looks like. Oh, also I put sautéed um, red peppers, green peppers, and onions on the side in a bowl. Um, because I told you that my husband does not eat them. My daughter eats them sometimes. It's an occasional thing. Um, but I do eat them. So I put them on a bowl. And using the same dish that you fried the um, ground beef in, you're going to put the vegetables in after the ground beef is taken out and that cuts on time as far as having to use yet another pan and also cleaning yet another pan so that um eliminates that one so these are the little tricks that you can do just to save on a couple of minutes of your time um let me stop talking and show you guys how this looks And that's how it looks. So, um, I've also done some of the raspberry bar. And you're just going to cut that out in squares. Um, I would recommend that you serve um, a square of this on the side of some vanilla ice cream. And this dessert actually only took me... Um, probably about 10 minutes to make and it only cost me a dollar and 50 cents at the most 
and that probably with a scoop of ice cream could serve about six people with a large portion of dessert so that's it you guys um, I'm going to put this in the oven and um, once it's out the oven you guys you're going to top this with shredded lettuce um, a, a dollop or two of sour cream um, you're going to use a little bowl or a little dish on the side for salsa because that is optional and um, some chives thrown on top of it and that's the Texas nacho platter so um, you ladies if you wanted to do a quick meal um, I hope you use this as an option it does not cost much because obviously if I did it it does not cost much <laughs> and it definitely appeases everyone so thank you all for tuning in once again continue to be blessed leave comments subscribe let me know if you wanted to see any other Mexican dishes because I do know how to make enchiladas and fajitas and things like that and I'll show you how to make those on a budget as well Thank you guys. Be blessed.